The 2014 AHA Stroke Article, Cervical Spine Manipulation Association with Cervical Stroke. Let's review the controversial consensus statement for healthcare providers published by the American Heart Association with the American Stroke Association regarding the relationship between cervical artery dissection and cervical manipulation. We'll review their points and try to determine the logic and motivation used in formulating their conclusions. The title of the article is Cervical Artery Dissections and Association with Cervical Manipulative Therapy, a statement for healthcare professionals from the American Heart Association, American Stroke Association, published in Stroke in 2014. It's important to note that this statement is endorsed by the American Association of Neurological Surgeons and Congress of Neurological Surgeons, two groups who have over the years made it very clear that they are concerned about cervical manipulation. This concern will be all the more ironic when we investigate the incidence of cervical artery injury caused by cervical spine surgery. As we will see the exemplary mixing of truth with fiction combined with wordsmithing to convey bias are emblematic of a mission from these neurological groups. First, some stats. Cervical dissection accounts for only 2% of all ischemic strokes, but accounts for 8 to 25% of stroke in patients less than 45 years of age. Internal carotid artery dissection has an annual incidence of 2.5 to 3 per 100,000 patients. Vertebral artery dissection has an annual incidence of 1 to 1.5 per 100,000. Please keep this number in mind as we compare with the AHA Stroke Council's interpretations and lack of objectivity when comparing to other causes. They do note that aberrations of dermal collagen fibrils and elastic fibers have been reported in approximately 50% of patients with spontaneous cervical artery dissections. The reported prevalence of trivial trauma is estimated to be between 12 to 34 percent in which cervical manipulation is combined with non-manipulative events. The Stroke Council performed a comprehensive review, but what is used as evidence? Well, they used some case studies and series, some small retrospective studies, and some survey and opinion pieces, all of which they seem to give equal weight to. Thankfully, they did review the existing large retrospective studies, including the Cassidy et al. study. Yet, one of the Stroke Council's members was involved in a study designed to dispute the findings of the Cassidy et al. study, which was just released at the same time as the Stroke Council statement article. We'll discuss this later. Also, although they state that the case studies and series and small retrospective studies frankly demonstrated nothing of significance, they managed to insert an opinion about what they might have shown if combined with clinical opinion pieces. It is interesting that they state, quote, current biomechanical evidence is insufficient to establish the claim that CMT causes CD, unquote, but go on to state, Quote, that clinical reports suggest that mechanical forces play a role in a considerable number of CDs, unquote. This is an example of a running theme providing a scientifically true but skewed statement followed by an opinion or an interpretation to refute or negate the scientific basis of that statement. Certainly the key questions are what degrees of force and strain are imposed on vertebral arteries and internal carotid arteries? Are these forces sufficient enough to cause damage from either a single event or multiple applications? What are the forces imposed by other activities, such as range of motion testing or activities of daily living, and how do they compare to those caused by manipulation? Note that all of these issues have been addressed through published research. Now with that brief overview, we can summarize the basic science evidence demonstrating that CMT is not a cause of VBI. There is evidence that blood flow is not decreased with cervical rotation. There is evidence that the strain forces with CMT do not exceed the failure rate of the cervical arteries. And there is evidence that strain forces with CMT are no greater than normal activities and in most sections of the VA, less than range of motion testing and VBI testing. The most sophisticated and revealing study to date was published by Cassidy et al. in Spine in 2008, entitled Risk of Vertebral Basilar Stroke and Chiropractic Care, Results of a Population-Based Case Control and Crossover Study. There were only 818 VB strokes who were hospitalized. 
This is out of 10 million patient lives. This is the evidence of the rarity of VB stroke. They matched hospital records indicating VB stroke with the same patient's record of a visit to a chiropractor and or a primary care medical practitioner. The take-home points are that in those under 45 years old, individuals were three times more likely to see a chiropractor or a primary care practitioner before their stroke compared to controls. There was no increased association between VB stroke and chiropractic visits in those older than age 45, and there was an association between VB stroke and patients of all ages visiting a primary care practitioner prior to stroke. Note, cause was not studied, only the association between stroke, time, and a visit to either a chiropractor or a medical doctor. Now on to the almost simultaneous publication of the article mentioned earlier, designed to refute the Cassidy et al. study, entitled Case Misclassification in Studies of Spinal Manipulation and Arterial Dissection. Note the author in bold is also on the Stroke Council. The rationale for this study was stated by the researchers. It includes that the Cassidy et al. study used ICD-9 codes that were specific for a neurovascular location, the posterior circulation, rather than codes for a vascular diagnosis, such as dissection. They argue that if cases were instead due primarily to atherosclerosis, then the increased association with PCP visits may be due to visits related to monitoring and management of vascular risk factors. They then theorize that this potential misclassification would more likely affect patients in the greater than 45 age group, where atherosclerosis as a cause of embolic stroke is more common. So what was different? Well, this was a population of 15 million veterans with ICD codes used in the Rothwell-Cassidy studies for the period January 2009 to August 2011. It included the three additional dissection codes in their initial EMR query. Then they searched for the presence of the word dissection in the EMR. Exposure to CMT for individual patients was not available in the VA database and was not collected. With no data on exposure to chiropractic manipulation, the researchers assumed the same exposure rate as the control population, 3.95%. Assuming the SMT exposure rate is misclassified, then the corresponding odds ratio for SMT rises to 2.15. Let's review some obvious limitations that were even expressed by the researchers of the VA study. The VA population was 90% male. Previous Canadian studies investigated a broader demographic population over a longer period using different coding and administrative processes. Exposure rates were hypothesized in this VA study. The researchers went as far as creating hypothesized VBA rates based on time after exposure to a non-existent chiropractic visit. Some clarifications and corrections are necessary. Given the authors want to attribute atherosclerotic causes for posterior circulation stroke, it must also be allowed for chiropractors given the hazard period was one month after a visit. If patients with cardiovascular risk factors are at a higher risk and therefore the cause of the increased association with MD visits, why is it that in the Cassidy et al. study, hypertension, heart disease, and high cholesterol were two to three times higher in the control group, those who did not have a stroke. Although the AHA report does not mention cervical spine surgery as a cause, the literature certainly does, including this 2014 Spine Journal publication entitled Vertebral Artery Injuries in Cervical Spine Surgery. Now, our turn to ask questions. Do medical doctors, especially neurosurgeons and orthopedic surgeons, cause vertebral artery injury? Is this as common as that attributed to manipulation? Is it detectable and potentially avoidable? The opening statement from this study was, quote, vertebral artery injury is a rare but serious complication of cervical spine surgery, unquote. They divided procedures based on type. 
These types of procedures can be further clustered into stabilization procedures involving upper cervical instrumentation fixation procedures for instability. These accounted for about 80% of causative procedures and radicular pain procedures, including discectomy, laminectomy, and foraminotomy, which accounted for most of the remaining 20% of procedures. In their study, vertebral artery injury incidence was overall 7 out of 10,000. The incidence was higher for surgeons who had performed 300 or less procedures, basically 3 out of 1,000. For those surgeons with experience with more than 300 procedures, the incidence was 6 out of 10,000. The difference? Cause and effect versus association. In other words, the surgery is a direct observable cause of the effect, whereas manipulation has only been tied to an association. The investigators certainly found some cases related to error, but also found that 20% of injuries were due to an anomalous course of the vertebral artery. So how common are these anomalies and can they be detected prior to surgery? A 2014 publication helps to answer this question. It's entitled Vertebral Artery Anomalies at the Cranial Vertebral Junction in the U.S. Population, published in Spine. Here are some examples of those anomalies. The mean for anomalies would be about 0.4% or about 4 per thousand in the U.S. However, in previous studies, the anomalies were seen higher with a prevalence of 5 to 10% in Asian populations. Based on the findings of this study, the authors do not recommend regular screening for anomalies when cervical spine surgery is being performed. So, are there measures that can be taken to decrease vertebral artery injury for cervical spine surgeries? Well, patients should be warned of the statistics regarding their procedure. Patients should be made aware of the significantly increased risk when being operated on by a less experienced surgeon. And patients scheduled for upper cervical procedures should consider requiring a CT with contrast be performed prior to that surgery to identify anomalous vertebral artery locations. At the end of their conclusion, the AHA Stroke Council states, quote, patients should be informed of the statistical association between CD and CMT prior to undergoing manipulation of the cervical spine, unquote. The rational evidence-based approach is to simply state that CMT is a safe procedure with extremely rare association to stroke, also found with visits to medical doctors, and that it has never been directly linked to cause and effect. In the vast majority of these cases, it's likely that the patient is in the process of dissection, complaining of severe neck or headache pain. For those interested in more in-depth reviews, please visit www.coffeebreaku. For a great review of the stroke issue, please read Don Murphy's article on the current understanding of the relationship between cervical manipulation and stroke and what it means for the chiropractic profession. Other great resources can be found at the ACA and NCMIC websites.